What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master One and welcome to my build guide and unit review of the Engage banner featuring Chloe, Alfred, Etty and also Celine. So let us begin with Chloe who is a blue focus unit on this banner and she is a lance flyer with 184 BST and dreaming spear as her preferred weapon. So this weapon does give her minus on special cooldown and simply provides her with visible plus 5 to all of her stats for just existing. So these visible stats are actually going to be having pretty good synergy with Pegasus Flight. So she's going to be able to have better visible checks with Pegasus Flight essentially. And then if she's on a team with two allies in a support partner pair, then she's able to get four effects. So the condition of her weapon is pretty easy to meet and it's not even like she needs to be within certain proximity of that pair. It's just that your team needs to have an ally supported pair. So if that condition is met, then she's going to be able to have a guaranteed follow-up attack and she can also inflict guard on the foe per attack and also get true damage based on 20% of her resistance and then she gets flat damage reduction just like Asker Brave Dimitri by 20% of her resistance. So instead of getting the flat damage reduction from defense, she gets the one from resistance and this does not really include the AoE specials but still her resistance is going to be pretty high so she's not really going to be taking too too much damage from the AoE specials to begin with. Just as a recap, the flat damage reduction is going to be different from the regular damage reduction in the sense that it does not get pierced by Deadeye or Lethality and it's not relative in nature. It is going to be based on your stat which is going to be resistance in Chloe's case. And for Asker, Brave Dimitri, we have seen that it depends on their defense. So getting the flat damage reduction is definitely pretty nice and kind of makes her the Lance version of Spring Maria. So with her base 42 resistance and the visible stats that she can get out of this weapon, She's definitely going to be having pretty good time reducing damage with this effect and then also doing true damage with a 38 base attack. She also has speed at base 40 which is not going to be the highest but can definitely be pretty nice with Pegasus Flight and she's going to be able to get the guaranteed follow up attack as is. Um, so that is going to be helping her even if she's not able to naturally double an opponent and if they do not have null follow up. Her physical bulk is not the highest and her HP is kind of low at base 36 uh, so you definitely have to watch out for that and she's mainly going to be being bulky with that flat damage reduction that she can try and get. She also has distance stance as her slotty skill which is going to be pretty helpful for taking care of mages with her high resistance and she also has Pegasus Flight 4. So the tier 4 version of Pegasus Flight can now inflict minus 4 attack and defense debuff on foe during the combat and then it does take in the visible speed stat into the check so it compares the visible speed stat of the unit to foe's visible speed stat minus 10. So it is a bit more lenient now and your speed stat is going to be mattering in that sense. So you don't really need to be faster than the opponent uh, but basically fast enough to meet the speed check and then you can inflict penalty on foes attack and defense in the combat depending on the 80% difference between the visible resistance stats of both units. So here because of getting the visible stats from her weapon Chloe is going to be having pretty nice time with this Pegasus flight skill and then finally at the end if the visible stat sum of unit speed and resistance is going to be more than full speed and resistance then you can just get the follow-up negation on the opponent. So she is basically going to be able to get the Omni Breaker effect by having the follow-up negation with Pegasus flight and then having the guaranteed follow-up attack with her weapon. So overall this skill is going to be pretty helpful for many of the uh, flyers who have high resistance and high speed because you pretty much need both of those things to work out and this can just make you a bit more bulky with the attack debuffs and, and the defense debuffs helping you with your damage output. So overall Chloe is going to be functioning as a pretty unique lance flyer with this flat damage reduction and she's definitely going to be a lot bulkier than what she seems to be because of this and she can also hit a lot harder because of the true damage that she can get and it's pretty easy to make her work because you just need an ally support and then you can have all of the effects. She doesn't really have any kind of like HP threshold or any kind of proximity effect which is definitely pretty nice. Pegasus Flight 4 is going to be having the same users as Pegasus Flight 3 but now you can get the follow up negation and also get extra attack and defense debuff. So the follow up negation is going to be a bit redundant with Arcane Xiong and also with Arcane Lutnir but can definitely help Shadows of Valentia S tier and she already has the damage reduction on foe's first attack so that is pretty helpful for her to function as a mixed phase flyer. For building up Chloe you can pretty much give her reposition and half speed smoke 3 so that you can have an easier time meeting the speed check of Pegasus flight and just being a bit faster is going to be helping you with the pseudo null follow up that you can try and get 
uh, with the Omni Breaker effect of Pegasus Flight 4 and the guaranteed follow up attack from her weapon. And Fury is going to be giving you the extra visible stats. So that is the perfect skill here so that you can get extra visible resistance and vis the visible speed for Pegasus Flight 4. But if you want to change things up and want to have more premium skills on her, then you can definitely have Attack Res Oath 4. So this is going to be helping you with the visible resistance and this is going to be helping you get more flat damage reduction and the true damage and also uh, just having more Pegasus Flight debuffs. The speed resistance oath variant is probably going to be the most optimal one whenever it comes out. Uh, but for right now, like Attack Res Oath 4 is going to be a pretty good option here. And because of her high resistance, she can definitely function with Iceberg. You can also run Eye of Shield Sacred Seal on her because archers are still going to be pretty annoying. And you can also run Attack Speed Hold so that you can get the speed debuffs in the combat and also get the attack debuffs to stack up with the Pegasus Flight. Plus Speed IV is going to be her best IV because to even begin with the Pegasus Flight's debuffs, you need to win the Visible Speed check. You can also use her with, um, you know, Attack Speed Catch for in the slot if you don't really want to have her with Distance Stance. And this way you can just stack up more speed and run Speed Smoke 4 so that you can function in both phases. And the regular damage reduction from the Smoke 4 skill and its dodge is actually going to be calculated before the flat damage reduction. And then whatever damage is going to be left, the flat damage reduction is going to be applied to it. So a lot of times you can see that someone like Brave Dimitri is going to be functioning with the regular damage reduction from his slot B and then with the flat damage reduction in his weapon. So the idea is pretty much the similar one here and you can have the Neutra skill so that you can have the Kanto mobility. You can also use her in Aether Raid's offense as an Omni tank. So with Embla being there, um, you know, save skills are not really the best uh, way of tanking and Omni tanks are definitely making a bit of a comeback. So you can give her the Omni buffs and also give her maybe some kind of status like Null Follow-Up status or even the Special Charges status or even support her with Legendary Eliwood. And that can allow her to basically Omni tank a lot of the Cav lines and the mazes that it runs. And the Guaranteed Follow-Up attack from her weapon is going to be really helpful. So you are definitely going to be getting a lot of damage reduction and also, you know, being able to do a lot of damage back with a Glimmer that you can retaliate back with and the true damage that she gets from her weapon. So she's definitely going to be a lot more bulky than she appears to be, but uh, she's definitely not going to be better than someone like Brave Dimitri, for example, when it comes to Omni tanking. It's just that she does have a lot better visible resistance than, um, you know, Brave Dimitri. So when it comes to tanking AoE specials, Chloe is going to be having no trouble, really. But again, watch out for Yune and try and support her with, like, Legend Eliwood for the Null Panic. Finally, she could be used in Arena with a max scoring build with Attack Speed Oath 4. And Attack Speed Oath 4 is definitely going to be helping you reach the speed tiers which are needed for Arena. And you can definitely get the extra offenses out of it. And she can easily tank a lot of the threats there, even Deadeye, Duo Chrom, uh, because of the flat damage reduction that she has got. And you can also just run Iot Shield Sacred Seal so that you can enable yourself from taking on the archers. Alfred is the Lance Cavalier present on this banner with Arcane Chiang as his preferred weapon, which is also a rearmed weapon, so you can actually give this to other Lance units. And I've made an entire video going over the best users of it and the builds that you can run with it. So Alfred himself is going to be able to get minus some special cooldown with this weapon and plus 5 to all of his stats if he's at or above 25% HP. He can also make a guaranteed follow-up attack and also stop the follow-up attacks of the enemies. And if whoever initiated moved a space, then you're going to be able to get special charges which is going to be really good because you're going to be getting special charges on both your attacks and the enemy's attacks so even if you're going to be running a high cooldown special like gale force it is going to be able to work out with this kind of weapon he does have base 45 attack which is pretty high with the super boon and then he has got super pain and all of the other stats his defense is also pretty high at base 43 and then his speed and resistance are pretty low. So he's going to be very susceptible to any kind of doubles, any kind of doubles from null follow-up units that is, and any kind of mage just nuking him, especially when you consider the resistance penalty from self-improver, his preferred slotty skill, which can give him visible plus an attack, visible plus 5 speed, and also visible plus 20 defense. So this is pretty much to give you like the big numbers, um, and you should not be, you know, getting immediately swayed by the numbers because he doesn't actually have anything to productively make use out of the visible stats. He doesn't really have, uh, you know, some kind of defensive flat damage reduction or any kind of true damage that scales off his defense or anything like that. So these visible stats are really good. I'm not saying it's not good, but 
just do not be swayed by the uh, you know big numbers that this skill can essentially give you and then you can also get the guard effect based on the hp threshold on the opponent so that is pretty good offensively and uh combining with the flow trace skill which he does have in his slot b he's going to be able to get the half version of null follow up which is going to be offensive in nature so that he can bypass the follow-up negation effects so it is basically a combination of a flow skill and a near trace skill and you can also get the counter remaining plus one movement he also has crossbar attack to support his allies and this can be inherited at the same time when you inherit Arcane Chiang. Alfred is going to be able to stand out a bit because of his preferred skill giving him the extra visible stats which is just amazing uh, but then again like I said he is going to be getting doubled by the null follow up units and he has to watch out for any kind of mage or dragon stack and potentially nuke him because he's not going to be having very high resistance. So Alfred is overall going to be functioning as a pretty nice lance cavalier with his high base 45 attack which then gets improved by self improver and the plus 20 defense that he can get so right out of the box he's going to be pretty physically tanky. You can always refine the arcane weapons with the regular refining stones. It's just that it is going to be taking you 200 refining stones, but you can definitely try and do that and just run reposition on him and he should be working fine. You could run attack defense solo or attack defense catch to just double down on his bulk. And yeah, right out of the box, he's going to be having 68 visible defense, which is definitely pretty nice. And it's going to be making him pretty resilient to a lot of the AoE damage from physical units, but it also makes him a magnet for like chill defense defense, chill attack, any of those uh, debuffs. So you have to watch out for that. And you can also run a more uh, offensive build with Gale Force and having attack defense menace. So you can trigger Gale Force pretty easily because of the special charges that are present in his weapon. So he can get the debuffs with the menace skill and then be even more physically bulky and just Gale Force off of the opponents and also get the trace effect. And then finally, if you want to use him in summoner duels, then I think that he could be used with uh, something like Turmoil and become a four movement Cavalier and essentially nuke with Blazing Wind. So this is one, you know, one of the ways of making productive use out of the plus 10 visible attack that he gets out of self improver. And he himself is not that susceptible to the AoE damage from the physical units. So that is pretty good and he could be used as an AoE nuke and by running duo Asker, duo Chrom, any of those units you can basically pre-charge this AoE special in Blazing Wind or even Growing Wind if you want to. And uh, you're going to be able to make the plus 10 attack uh, work out for your AoE damage that you get from Self Improver. So he could be used in Summoner Duels S or if you're just trying to grind up the favor level of him and the regular Summoner Duels and he is going be able to loop his uh, AoE special because of the special charges that you can get from Arcane Chiang. Selene is a green infantry mage with Joyous Tome as her preferred weapon, so this can give her minus and special cooldown. And if she's within three spaces of an ally, then she can get three different kinds of effects. So the first kind is going to be at start of a turn. She can heal up 7 HP to herself and the allies within three spaces. And during the combat, she's going to be able to get plus 5 to all of her stats and also damage reduction versus the in combat attacks and also against the AoE specials by X multiplied by 15%. So this is basically going to be going all the way up to 45% and the X here is going to be the number of allies within three spaces that are above half HP and it's not really hard for the allies to be above half HP when she is going to be providing such strong healing to them and then she can get true damage which is going to be X multiplied by five and this can go all the way up to 15 true damage per hit which is absolutely amazing so again you need the allies to be above half health to get these effects and the damage reduction is definitely going to be helping her engage against a lot of the threats which are going to be doing damage back to her so it is going to be helping her not die immediately like many of the other mages and the true damage is going to be helping her offensively and she's going to be functioning as a passive healer because she can restore 7 hp to herself after the combat and any kind of ally who initiates or is going to be in the combat within three spaces of her is also going to be able to heal up 7 hp after their combat so that is a pretty unique effect because you can basically have her on something like a summoner duels s team and then you can have the front line have finish skill, bulwark skill and you can just stack up so much healing and heal up a lot of HP which is going to be absolutely fantastic. So Selene is basically there as a hybrid unit who can hit pretty hard with her true damage and also survive with the damage reduction and also provide the healing support to your allies with this kind of weapon. She does have base 41 attack so she can definitely nuke pretty hard and she also has base 44 speed and base 38 resistance is going to be helping her against many of the AoE specials especially when she can reduce the damage from them 
them with the damage reduction that she can get and her defense is going to be pretty low so she's going to be depending on her damage reduction to survive the physical attacks she does come with the final ideal skill in the ideal family and speed resistance ideal 4 so this can give her plus 9 speed and resistance and she also has can't control 3 so that's why she's going to be you know useful out of the box for something like summoner duel says um, because having more counter control units is always going to be helpful and she could also be used in ether raids defense actually because counter control is also a very good skill there it's pretty amazing that we have got counter control in the regular summoning pool because it's definitely a meta skill for ether raids defense and also for summoner duels and there are going to be a couple of units which are going to be standing out when it comes to inheriting this skill so if you are going to be giving counter control to any unit then duochrome is basically the best option out of anyone because he has got the two change fate which can provide support in summoner duels and he is you know an evergreen support unit in summoner duels who can function really well with his offenses and also provide these special cooldowns with two change fate and he also has this duo button he can also be used in ether raids defense as a pretty good counter control unit in something like anima season for example or in the dark season if you're not going to be using medias and uh, gatekeeper is just going to be doubling down on the support by running counter control in a slot save a dancer like ninian could also run counter control and be useful in something like the anima season of ether raids defense so in both ether raids defense and summoner duels this skill is going to be amazing because there are just so many counter units who can hit and run and this does stop that counter control is going to be helping you tremendously especially in the anima season where people are going to be using regen and they are going to be hit and running against the structures and against your team and note with the counter control can be really good on a cav line because then you can stop the canto of someone like yuri or just the hit and run from many of the canto units for building up Celine on a budget, you can simply give her a cat and that can allow her to have speed resistance link and she can function as a pretty decent support unit for arena assault or for even limited hero battles if it does end up using engage as the titles and you can just have attack speed form as the sacred seal because she needs to be within three spaces of her allies and you can also run her with a couple of skills from divine codes like attack speed ideal, null follow up and also time pulse. So because she has got minus on special cooldowns, she can basically pre-charge glimmer and in her player phase, she can actually trigger Glimmer twice in the player phase by having it pre-charged. So that is going to be really helpful for nuking, especially with the damage reduction that she can get. And if you want to run her with a more premium build, then the finish kill is going to be absolutely amazing for stacking up the healing that she can, you know, get from her Joyous Tome. And you can just run Time Pulse 4 so that you can loop your Glimmer and always have it charged up. You can also use her with finish kill and special spiral 4 so this is going to be allowing you to pierce through the damage reduction which is one of the things which can annoy mages this is going to be having iceberg always charged up so that you can nuke with it and you can also have speed smoke 4 so that you can stack up the damage reduction and basically function in the mix phase you can also use her in summoner duels s or just the regular summoner duels because of her support so she's not exactly a yamir who can erase the status effects which is a lot a lot better because just getting rid of the penalties and the debuffs is going to be pretty amazing with the Ymir. so she's uh you know not that kind of hybrid healing support unit but still she could be helpful uh, with her debuffs with chill attack resistance which is always going to be helpful and then running counter control from her default build and she is going to be providing that healing so if you're going to be using some kind of very strong and merged up uh, frontliner then they're going to be enjoying the healing that they can get out of her and also she's going to be able to function with bridal katria and get the true damage and hit pretty hard Speaking of Bridal Catria, she could be run with Remote Sparrow and stack up the damage reduction for the player phase and simply have Ruptured Sky and Time Pulse which can just pre-charge it always and this is going to be helpful in Aether Raid's defense where she can nuke really hard with the true damage that she can get and in Aether Raid's Dark Season you can just run her with Medias so that you have the Unguard and you cannot really be damaged by her Bolt Traps or by Bolt Tower so it's going to be pretty easy to meet the condition of Joyous Tome so that she can get the true damage and the damage reduction. Eti is going to be the final unit of this banner and she's actually the instant demote from this patch and you can also get the free copy of her from the login bonus and also from the engage quests. So she's going to be functioning as a pretty nice unit for your merch project because of her amazing base 45 attack and base 40 speed which does have a super boon. So she definitely has the offenses and she's pretty much ready for the arcane bow whenever it comes out with those kinds of offenses. But right now she has got protection bow plus as the inheritable weapon and this is basically winter felix's reindeer bow but it has got the three range um so it can work in three spaces of the allies to give you plus five attack and defense and also inflict the guard effect on the opponent per attack 
So this is going to be a decent weapon until we get Arcane Bow, but obviously Whitecap Bow is going to be the superior offensive option that he can run. And her base kit does have attack defense ideal 3 at 5 star and attack defense gap at 4 star. And she is basically going to be functioning as a pretty amazing instant demote nuke uh, for an archer. And she could be compared with Kiragi who's also another instant demote which we did get the free copies of. So Kiragi does have more defense, which is going to be helping him with his bulk, but Eti does have more attack stat. So in a way, um, you know, both of these units are pretty similar as an instant demote, but it's just that one of them is going to be faster like Kiragi and one of them is going to be hitting harder with uh, her attack stat. And Eti does have a bit more resistance, so she's not going to be taking as much damage from the magical attacks like Kiragi. For running Eti on budget, because everyone does get a free 5 star copy of her, you can simply give her a Norn for speed defense link and have reposition on her and she can function as a decent budget unit. But if you want to invest a bit more into her, then I would definitely recommend Whitecap Bow Plus. So this is going to be helping you get the brave hits and uh, she does have a speed super boon so you can definitely make good use out of it and you can just run Deadeye because she does have pretty high attack stat and Deadeye does scale off the damage that you do in the combat, kind of like Glimmer. So that's why having Deadeye is definitely going to be strong on her and you can run attack speed ideal 4 from the divine codes with and also run loud speed defense which was available in the limited ephemera manuals on New York Lethe. And then you can just run null follow up as a sacred seal. So this is a pretty offensive build that you can run with white cap bow plus. And you can also just invest even more into the white cap bow plus build. And have time pulse 4 so that you can have ruptured sky or moon bow at one cooldown. And this is always going to be at one cooldown thanks to time pulse. So you can essentially trigger this on your brave hit and do a lot of damage with our high attack stat. So with the finish kill, she's going to be able to get the true damage, which is really good. And also get the healing, which is going to be nice for the self-sufficiency. You can also run her with protection bow at max investment. And she can be run with a speed smoke build, basically function in the mix phase with that guard effect. And with the finish kill, giving her the healing for the longevity. And you can also run her with white cap bow plus and attack speed unity and the oath for skill. So the oath for skill is going to be enabling the teleportation and the unity skill is going to be you know just protecting you against the debuffs your attack and speed which are definitely her most important stats finally she could be run with remote sparrow so that she can get the damage reduction in the player phase and run the tempo skill so that she can always trigger ruptured sky on her brave head and even if she takes counter attack she can actually trigger ruptured sky twice in a single round of combat which is going to be doing quite a lot of damage you can also run this with deadeye of course but uh ruptured sky and time pulse 4 can also work out with a tempo skill Make sure to share this video with your friends if they're trying to build up any of these units. And if you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like and a comment helps you tremendously. And if you really, really enjoyed, you could always support me directly by using super thanks down below or by becoming a YouTube member. And for more free videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as Chloe's weapon if you do not have ally support on your team. So that's all. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.